So now we're going to have a look at completing production within Business Central. Okay, now please bear in mind that once again we are using some very simple um, setup parameters in this particular example. Okay, so no doubt your businesses may be more complex. Um, so you know you'll you'll have to use your imaginations. I'm I'm sure, um, but hopefully this is sort of indicative of, of the sort of process that, that you'll go through. So where we left off, we had planned um, to produce ten bikes. Um, so that that demand was generated from a sales order, which we then used planning worksheet to um, to create. Um, so we're now in firm plan stage. If I then go into that. Um, production order, we can see exactly what's dropped through from, from the planning worksheets that, that we use to create this particular production order. Um, and then we've also got the estimated start time um, based on the calendars that we have set up within our system. Okay, I'm qu quickly going to switch here so that um, our posting refers to, to manufacturing. Um, rather than just, just retail, just so that we can uh, account for our costs um, slightly differently. And what we're going to do now, assuming that everything is correct, is go in and then we are going to change the status um, so this production order is now released. So as opposed to firm plan, which is what we're in at the moment, we're going to release it to say we are now starting work on this. So I'll click on yes. It will tell us that it's now done that for us. So when we now go back to our home screen, we can see it jump from firm plan into released. Okay. Now, this is a point where it's potentially good to talk through some of the reporting and some of the capacity um, sort of um, capacity and load reporting that we can get through the system. So if I click on capacity here um, and then go on capacity task list, I'm just going to preview that based on work center. Um, we'll go in here um, and we'll be able to see exactly what is consuming our capacity here. So in this instance, we've got that release production order, um, which we can see there with the associated start and end times based on our routing. OK, if we don't want to drop out a report like that, then, of course, there's nothing to stop us from going into our work centers. Um, and then within that work center, we can go in and I'm not actually going to go into the work center, um, but I'm going to go into uh, the work center and then I'm going to click on load. OK, so we'll see here that we've got capacity, which is um, 80 hours. We're looking at the calendar and the amount of hours we work. Um, and then here we can see that we've got 33 of those allocated um, based on, on that order as well. So if I click on that hyperlink for that 33.9, again, it's showing us a similar view to what we saw on that report. Um, but again, it's, it's more of a, a table view there. Um, and of course, that might be a little bit easier to work through than, than generating reports, especially if you've got um, more than one order that is uh, consuming capacity within, within your work centre. So there are a couple of good screens to use um, you know, when we are actually starting to produce goods. Okay. Now, when it comes to actually fulfilling these orders um, and actually you know, tracking what we have and haven't done, we'll go into the release production order um, and we'll start ticking off uh, what we finished and, and what we haven't. Okay. So all of the scheduling and all that sort of stuff comes from that firm plan stage, but of course we can and we, we can go in and amend um, in the event that we need to be flexible in the way that we are producing. Um, another thing to bear in mind as well is just because our bill of materials says that we need to use a certain amount of components, that doesn't mean that we can't change those. Okay, so if we go into the line on this production order, um, we can actually shortcut to what the bill of materials has dropped in for us, but there's nothing to stop us either from changing the quantity or actually for a su or substituting a different item. So we could go in and say, you know, replace with a substitute instead. Um, and it will show us here whether there is a substitute available as well. So just because we've started doesn't mean that the, the components that we're consuming are, are locked in and there isn't that flexibility there. Um, there is. Now, if you remember me mentioning before, all of the mechanism behind the way that we are going to output is going to be done manually. So we've got manual flushing set up for this particular production order. So to facilitate that, we need to go into the line and then the production journal to mark off what we've actually done. So I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. Of course, we've got the consumption quality, quantity here for the 10. OK, um, output quantity in each of these is, is obviously 10 based on the total. Um, so we can go off and we can say for each of those stages, um, we have gone through these stages. OK. And again, you can see flushing method filter is manual in this instance. So as I say, this is a manual way of doing it. Um, there are other ways that you can account for output and consumption within the system. Um, unfortunately, we don't have to time, time to look at them now. But I'll just go in and, and I'll post that journal to say we've now consumed the components and we've carried out our operational tasks. So what we can then do is go in and similar to you know moving it from, from planned into released, we can then go in to change the status to say finished. What I can then do is I can update those unit costs to say, yep, 
that's all up to date. And what it will do is, as mentioned previously, it will take all of our component costs um, and then it will add them to the costs of our work and machine centres and it will give us a, a, a complete sort of finished cost or cost of, of that finished goods um, so that we've got more accurate detail on what it's actually cost us um, and our profit margins when it comes to sell. So I'll click on finish there. Uh, finished. Excellent. So we've now got nothing in production, but what we will see if we go into our items is that we do have um, 10 of those finished bicycles ready to be shipped. OK, now it is worth noting at this point that what I did in terms of the actual production and marking off the different stages of production was done from maybe a, an administration point of view. So you'd have to imagine me as a production planner actually receiving information from the shop floor saying we've done this, we've done that. Now, that's not always ideal. Um, if you did want more information on some of the more visual tools and some of the shop floor data capture tools that we provide that enables people on the shop floor to clock on and clock off tasks, um, then of course that's something that we can facilitate and all you need to do is request more information on that. Okay, So we can now see that we've got 10 of those ladies bikes, so all we need to do is go in and complete the process by shipping them out to the customer. So we'll go into Rela Cloud um, and we'll just finish the process. So quantity 10, we've now got that in stock, so we can go in post shipping invoice. So hopefully that's a good insight into how production works within Business Central. Um, as a quick recap, we've gone from looking at items, um, and build of materials and routings, um, to actually planning based on sales demand to then generate purchase orders and the associated production order, which we've then moved through the different production stages. We've then released the production order. We've entered uh, information into our production journal to ensure that our output quantities and our operations are completed. Um, and then we've finished that production order to then bring those finished goods into stock. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30-day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.